I just paid $5.89 a pound for a box of certified organic, grass-fed and finished beef tenderloin fillets, also known as filet mignon. New York strips, T-bones, sirloins, all the steaks for just $5.89 a pound. To put that into perspective, a conventional raised cut of sirloin is $11.94 a pound at Walmart. A conventional cut of filet at Walmart, and that's corn fed, sprayed with chemicals, the worst of worst, $20.82 a pound. Sometimes in the grocery you can find grass fed beef, sometimes you can find organic, seldom do you get them together. I was able to get them together with grass finished for $5.89 a pound. I was able to get such a great price on the beef by buying in bulk, so I bought an entire side, or a half, a steer. How much is the hanging weight on a half a steer? 316 pounds. Where's the beef? But because I got an entire side of beef, not only did I get all the steaks, I got all the roasts and all the ground beef as well. The Walmart price on ground beef is $6.12 a pound, again, conventional compared to mine at $5.89 a pound for organic grass-fed. So regardless of quality, dollar for dollar, Walmart can't even touch the price I'm getting this at. This is one reason why I raise sheep and pigs and not cattle. I can't get organic grass-fed and finished lamb here and organic pork is super rare everywhere, so I have to raise it myself. But because I have access to the highest quality beef at a price lower than the low quality beef in the grocery, I don't need to raise beef. getting harassed by yellow jackets. It's been a really bad year for them. When we get the beef thing wrapped up, I think I'm gonna make a yellow jacket, like a DIY yellow jacket trap. Back to the beef. I'm happy that I'm able to support a local rancher who sells the beef exclusively wholesale once a year. I have found for my family that a quarter of a beef is not quite enough for a full year, and a half gives me a little bit of a surplus that I can share with family and friends. Oh wow, look at that up there. That might be part of the problem right there, the yellow jackets. Buying the beef in bulk is right for my family, but there are pros and cons to this. There are some drawbacks. So let's talk about the pros and then get into the cons. The first pro is something we've already addressed and that is it is much cheaper to buy in bulk. You can get much higher quality and be supporting a local farmer at the same time. The next benefit is if you buy the right amount for your family, you'll get an entire year supply for your family in one shot. This is great for food storage purposes. It removes your dependency on the grocery. If you remember last year during the COVID pandemic, there were grocery cells that were empty. My freezer still had meat in it. Another benefit is each week, I come out to my garage to do my grocery shopping. I just open the freezer door. I think I get some ground beef this week. How about some sirloin steaks? In the fall, I love making stock, so I come out here and grab some bones for stock. So all my beef, along with my lamb and pork and chicken, duck that I raise here, is all in these freezers, super accessible. Another benefit is getting the cuts that you wouldn't necessarily always buy. Like for me, that would be a flank steak or perhaps short ribs. Maybe for you that's skirt steak. I get it, short ribs are super popular now, but some of the other cuts are less popular and not something you think of to buy in the grocery. So when I see these cuts in my freezer, it encourages some creativity in the kitchen and increases our meal diversity. And lastly, I'd say for the pros, because there's such an abundance right here, easily accessible, it encourages me to eat home more because I have so much food here. But there are some cons to take into consideration. For example, the upfront cost. Yeah, you save money over time by not spending a lot more money in the grocery. However, you have to write that check right up front. That 316 pounds of beef cost me $1,861. That was a painful check to write. Again, I know this saves me a lot of money over time, but upfront, that hurts a little. Con number two, it requires you to have freezers. Supply in freezers is low, cost is getting high in these things, and also you have to have the space 
to store the freezers. There's also a vulnerability factor with these freezers. Last summer, this freezer here went out twice on me. I lost a lot of meat because of it. Of course, long-term power outages can be an issue for these as well. You may have seen my goal video for this year at the beginning of the year. One of those goals is energy resilience. For that very reason, backup power for the freezers. I'm actively working on that. I have the batteries for the battery bank I'm building, but I need a place to store the batteries. The framing work has finally begun in my outdoor shop, so we're gonna get this thing dried in, and then I'll be able to climate control in here and store batteries in here. Another drawback to the system requires a little bit of discipline with meal planning because all of your meat is frozen. And we touched on this last con in the pros a little bit with the meat cuts. Sometimes you'll get cuts in there that maybe you don't really care for or don't know what to do with. For me, that cut is the round steak. I tried a couple different ways cooking that. I never really cared for it. So I called the butcher that does the cutting and said, hey, no more round steaks, throw that in the ground. So I get that as ground beef now. I guess I should add that to the pro list. You can totally customize your cuts. Maybe you loved eating a ton of hamburgers, but you don't really care for roasts. Have your roasts all ground up in a hamburger. I've been buying beef in bulk since 2015 and it has been a great system for me and my family. If you have room for a freezer and the upfront funds to purchase the beef, I highly recommend you buying in bulk from a local rancher, saving some money, supporting local, and filling your freezer with some high quality nutrient dense beef. Not only will you be saving money, but you'll be eating a lot better as well. To find a local rancher who is using sustainable practices, you can go to either eatwild.com or localharvest, I think it's .org. Check that out. I saw this style of trap on Mousetrap Monday YouTube channel. I thought it was pretty cool. So I have some meat here. This is just some old salami from a refrigerator that I've nailed into this board over this water. The way this is supposed to work is the meat-eating yellow jackets are gonna they'll fly in to eat the meat and they're a little bit heavier when they leave. So as they go to take off, they usually dip down and they hit the water with the soap in it and will fall in the water and drown. Of course, there's not a single yellow jacket even sniffing it out. I'm gonna leave this set up for a bit and I will check back later. You ladies better not eat that meat off that board. Yeah. Let's go check on that trap now. And nothing. Something took the stick off and actually ate the meat right off the screw there. And there are no yellow jackets in the water. These ladies right here could be the responsible parties or perhaps the community cat, Priscilla. She could have done it. I'll have to save working on this trap for another time because I need to go thaw some beef for dinner now. Mm -hmm.